Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. Today, I want to talk about some things that might border upon church politics. But really, I think what it comes down to is church life and faith life, what we actually believe. And what's spurring me towards these ideas is, um, as I've said before, I'm going through Dr. Brant Petrie and uh, Dr. John Bergsma's Catholic Introduction to the Old Testament. It's a uh, I believe about 800 page work um, and they, they say in the beginning it's meant for graduate students and I guess I, I can see why I mean you, you probably need a pretty good understanding of the whole Bible in the first place but I think if you've read the Bible a couple times you could understand this book pretty easily and it probably also helped to have a good understanding of history for context because he doesn't he doesn't necessarily give a lot of those historical contexts. Um, but I think if you had those, the basic history and, you know, basic knowledge of the Bible, maybe having read through the Bible twice, gone through something like Jeff Caven's, uh, what is it called? The Great Adventure Bible Timeline, I think is what it's called. If you've gone through those things, I think this book would be a pretty easy, but, and also, like, honestly entertaining read in a like an academic sense you know anyway the the first hundred pages are dedicated both to an introduction to the book but then mostly to an introduction to the Pentateuch the first section of the book is on the books of the Pentateuch and what I found have, have found fascinating by reading this book is um, learning about the different methods for biblical uh, criticism, uh, particularly those for historical criticism uh, and that which kind of springs from Julius Wellhausen and the, what you could say, liberal Protestant um, biblical scholarship of the 19th century um, which which really made a basis for a lot of the historical criticism that we see today of the scriptures where you know people don't take uh, they don't take the authorship of Moses for the Pentateuch as uh, plausibility um, you know, they say either it was written by um, under King Josiah in what would that have been in like the 700s BC, um, and they're just kind of reflecting back upon uh, back upon the patriarchs what they own, their own lives looked like. Okay, um, you know, and a lot of this comes from either a totally atheistic or agnostic point of view where you know miracles need to be explained away in some way in some fashion or it comes from the point of view where like basically all of scripture is not to be taken literally in any way. Um, like a lot of very orthodox Christians would take the first few chapters of Genesis in a in a non-literal sense. But almost every other book, you know, there, there's in some sense within that book you could take it literally. Okay. Um, you know, counterpoints to this would be things like Jonah. A lot of people 
also think the Book of Tobit is fictional. Um, although I don't understand that one as much. There, there aren't a lot of like extraordinary events necessarily that happen in that book. I mean, casting out of demons and you know the angel walking with with Tobias, but uh, besides those things, you know, I, I guess if one is like a liberal Christian and doesn't believe angels or demons exist then you know maybe you wouldn't want to think Tobit was meant to be taken historically or literally anyway but what I really want to comment on here is the kind of the philosophical underpinnings of this kind of a view and and a lot of the other views that come with it so this would be really again <laughs> I feel like I'm, you know, trumpeting the same blast every five seconds, but it, I think its roots do come from nominalism in a, in a very real sense. Um, because once you say that concepts are just names we give them, how many other things did humanity just think up and, and name, which we, for millennia, have, you know, considered to have been fact you know so so maybe somebody just thought up the stories of the Pentateuch and you know and, and therefore there's no real good reason to believe in the accounts the there another probably deeper reason here is um, springing Forth from this nominalistic worldview would be ideas such as that um, anything that is religious, you know, and this is this is nominalism's developed into more of a into a, a mod, more modern, even more modern idea where where basically just anything that has a religious connotation or religious roots is um, the police suspect and you know is all surrounded by different forms of skepticism kind of enlightenment thinking where we're trying to get away from definitely organized religion but probably religion in general anyway there's some thoughts on that <laughs>